live. We're live. We're doing it. This is episode eight. Yes. Episode eight. Hello. Good morning. We're going to talk about boobs today. <laughs> More than ever before. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about your bralette. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about lessons from grading the bralette that apply to other types of garments. Yeah. Um, Especially yeah. negative ease. Mm -hmm. negative ease. We're going to talk about negative ease. That's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Before we get into it, what's up with you? Well, uh, so it is the morning and my tea is still coffee, but I do also have a water here because it is officially summertime in Florida, even though we're recording this, it is still March. <laughs> it's been summer for like <laughs> weeks, <laughs> but it's like at least 85 most days now. So that's nice. Um, we're going to reach by 49 today. I'm going to shovel some mulch. So it's fake summer. It's still 49 up there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. I used to live that life, <laughs> um, but I've broken out my warm weather knits and I'm excited about that. And I'm going to be starting to release some warm weather knits coming up. Uh, in addition to the bralette I've got today, I'm wearing the Therese dress, which you, if you follow me on Instagram, you've been seeing posts come up lately and uh, yeah, I'm psyched on that. And I had one personal tea I actually wanted to share also, or sort of shout out and I just want to shout out step parents for a second. Um, Jen knows that in the last year, because of various things, I've gone from being not a step parent to a part time to a full time step mom. And uh, so, shout out to all the step parents who decide that step means stepping up. Uh, it's not easy, but we all know parenting is worth it. Uh, but as little support as there is for new moms, I promise you that there is less for new step moms. <laughs> so, um, hey, y'all, I see you. And uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. That's sweet. I love Thank that. You. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i not a step parent, but I have some friends who are. And it is. Uh, I think that maybe because there's so many different ways to put it together that there's not mm -hmm. one accepted, like, here's the experience you're having and let us socially recognize that. Right. Which I like, but then yeah. also it, it means that most people don't necessarily understand, um, like a lot, how different my life is. Right. <laughs> and, really like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful. It's a great experience, but it's hard. It's hard to even just like, I work from home. So like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have new step kids, but I have a new puppy. So that's my personal team. Yes. Sunny. <laughs> Sunny, we're here for you. <laughs> oh, she's um, 15 weeks and she's the best girl and the most sassy, naughty a little critter and she's so roly-poly she's basically just like a non-newtonian fluid she just flows around <laughs> the house she's amazing she's absurd except that she steals a shoe in which case she prances because she's super proud uh -huh. so she doesn't she doesn't really pull when she's stealing she's she gets real proud yeah so that's my personal tea um on the work front i've really i've been experimenting with um well you know like i have a new puppy so i've just kind of been thinking okay we're going to redesign life for the spring from the ground up. This mm -hmm. is what we think of as our off season, but it's also when we prepare for our busiest season of fall. Um, right. Yeah. So I'm just kind of figuring out what life means in a slightly different shape. Um, just like me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't that. Nope. Uh, and the garment that I was going to have sampled it is back on my needles and I'm enjoying it very much. So oh. yes. Yeah. Changes. Ch -ch -ch Changes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have a new bralette pattern on my needles. Mm -hmm. You know something about. Yeah. And it is size zero needles. It is, um, it is not the easiest knit, although it's not a lengthy knit either. So I think it falls somewhere in the middle there of like 
oh my gosh, what did I get into? And also like, wow, this is happening so fast. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, I was at my mom's this weekend and she's knitting forest vines and it's not, okay. it's a, it's a, it's a heavily pieced garment that's constructed with three needle bind off. Mm -hmm. um, so this endless picking up and knitting, there's not very much seeming to get a really cool construction. Um, and she, I was like, it's not an easy pattern. And she's like, it's not, it's like, but at the same time, like, there's no thing that makes it hard. Like what makes a right. pattern not easy? Cables Deal. and color work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that those things by themselves are super easy. I think it's when you have to do a lot of stuff at once. Yes. I actually think, um, so I'm like, I find cables and color work usually happen on slightly larger needles. And I actually don't like knitting with bigger needles. Um, I don't know. They don't, my hands don't like them as much. I have funny hands anyway, because yeah. I was born with like different, I was born with an extra thumb y'all. Uh, so anyway, so I actually do like small <clears throat> needles, even though they pose their own challenges, but I think all over lace in a garment is quite hard because of the fact that you're trying to maintain like an increase and decrease pattern while increasing and decreasing for a garment. My Jane testers would tell you they think that one is a little hard, I think. They would lodge some complaints. Yeah, but not after they finish. They're all really happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think cables are hard when you have to do them, like, at the same time. Like, I once worked on a pair of socks where there was three cable charts, and one of them was mm -hmm. worked across an odd number of rows. And the oh. other two were worked across different sets of even numbers of rows. And there was nothing fun about it. It was a part-time job. I didn't right. like them. And also <laughs> the strain across the front of the foot because of all that tension. I hated it. I was yeah. Like, ow. Ow. Yeah. Oh, cables ow. are, I do think cables are hard to design with because they can change the tension of the fabric a lot. But you have to like find the right gauge. And I think they work well for, well, people like to use them for negative ease garments, but they are going to stretch so much in a negative ease garment that they can be hard to predict, I think. So what, so talk to us about the construction in the bralette and how long do we have to wait for you to flash us? I think you have to wait until after the credits. Okay. Well, after the, after the, the intro, after the soft <laughs> music. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. All so, right. Listen, I'm excited to get to it. So should we push play on that and then come back and talk about yeah. all that? All right, let's, let's do it. Do it. <laughs> all right. And we're back. <laughs> So this is the bralette episode. This is the official episode about my new bralette design, which is in testing. And Carol, her name is Carol, right? Her name is Carol, the Carol okay. bralette. I keep forgetting that she has a name now. She has a name now. So mm -hmm. It's been the bralette in my head for about two years. But yeah, um, yeah Jen wants a flash. So I'm going to, I am wearing my bralette today underneath this tree dress, especially because my tree dress is a little too big in the body that I have now. Uh, she fit the body that I knit for, but that was, this is a garment that I designed a long time ago. Anyway, so the back is really deep, right? And so that works out great for this. Yeah, yeah it's one of the places that I really wanted to hand knit bralettes for. And the bralette itself, ta-da! So Carol fits, uh, let me get it, there we go. You can see my sunburn on my belly a little bit. Sunburn, Tom. <laughs> From kayaking this weekend. Shut up. I told you it's 49 here. <laughs> <laughs> I was kayaking in a string bikini for like six hours. I'm, oh. I'm getting a rash guard, everyone. So anyway. You can it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so the Carol Brella is special because... She has encased elastic, not just in the band, um, but in the arm and neck hole edgings as well. And this is my first sample. I'm actually making a little tutorial video today 
also that is going to be on our YouTube already. That'll talk about how I put the band in here. Um, and there will be another tutorial about adding this band in the future. Uh, but I want to point out on the sample I'm wearing that I made this elastic a little too short. And that's why there's like a little bit of funny stuff happening in my strap. And also that this is not my final sample. My arm holes like a little high, but this was my like first experiment sample. Yeah, and now the that the pattern. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I'm really psyched because I'm knitting two more samples right now. That will be uh, just slightly improved from this one. But I was so happy with this one. And everyone is so excited with this one that we like went ahead and got into test. But the changes are all super slight, just like narrowing yeah, here, a little more depth. Exactly. Things that people probably didn't notice before. So why you got your tits out? Walk us through a visual of assembling it. So we're going to start from the bottom. Yeah, you're going to start from the bottom. Here, I have, I have a band right here that is all knit. <clears throat> so this is one of my future samples. And you can see there's a provisional cast on down here that um, goes all the way around first. You cast on your whole band with a provisional cast on and you knit the, you know, halves like you do when you provisionally cast on with the purl row in the middle, right? I'm at the point here where I'm about to install the elastic. And the band elastic is pretty simple because you're just going to fold up your provisional cast on, pick it up on other needles, and tuck the elastic in there, right? The elastic for the band, I also have right here, is thicker. And this is mine. Right, I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna do the good girl thing and sew it with the overlapping edges on the square instead of, I did my first sample kind of haphazardly because I'm not a sewist. But shout out to Jillian, test her recommendation for sewing this securely. Uh, and then this is just gonna go right inside the uh, band I knit when I seam it up. So once that happens, everyone then goes into shaping their cups. So this section, the boob section, right? That's where we have 44 different options. The band here and the chest up here, there are 11 sizes that would range from like normally what we would think of as a 30 inch full bust to a 70 inch full bust. Um, however, because this is a bralette, Jen and I have spoken a lot about the fact that your upper bust measurement is the one that's going to best predict the size of your shoulders and your chest. So in order to make a bralette that would fit everyone's shoulders and chest with options for different size breasts, um, because this is a negative ease garment, I didn't want to just add bust arts because I feel like the length alone would not really accommodate the additional width that like I have almost a 10 inch difference between my under bust and my full bust. And then my upper bust and my full bust have like a five or six inch difference, something like that. So that's a lot of additional inches, especially in a smaller uh, chest size, right? Cause I'm like size two where normally a size chart would predict that I have a one inch or a no inch difference between my upper bust and my full bust, right? So for people like me and for people at any size who are not gonna fit into that predicted bust size, um, I created cup shaping. So there's a lot of increasing, then there will be bust starts for some cups, not for so the we smallest. We'll add width, right, with increases. Mm -hmm. Then we'll add length with short rows and then what? And then we will decrease out any additional cup length so that you end up back at the upper bust size for your band, right? So uh, like a size four cup one and a size four cup four are the same here and the same here. They're just different here in the front chest. Right? In the volume. The back, mm -hmm. right. The back is the same. Everything else would be the same. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. 
Then you knit the straps, um, which you can easily customize your armhole length then because the straps are just knit until you reach your shoulder. But there is a recommended armhole depth, of course, and modify if you wish. Uh, and then you pick up welts, basically, like a brioche pickup for the armhole and the neck edging and create a tube. And then you're going to thread your final elastic through that. And you'll have to sew that together while it's in the thing. But I found that really simple and easy to do. And, um, and then it's just a slight, like, eight stitches that you have to seam together to close up that tube at the end. And that's it. It's a sewn tubular bind off, right? Most of the stitches have a sewn tubular bind off, except for a few in order to leave the channel open so that you can get your elastic in. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a long, uh, regular bind off first and then sewn tubular bind off for like 95% of your stitches. Yeah. Cool. Super Which fun. is a pretty simple technique, yeah. Um, it's actually really fun. Hold on, now I have to fix my seat. Don't don't notice how short I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I don't have a booster underneath me, everyone. That's not how I say. <laughs> um, but so that's the tour of the bra. Basically, That's there's awesome. a lot of casting off. Once you finish your bust apex and bust decreases, you're casting off the back, you're casting off the armholes, you're casting off the neck, but it's just one, one row at a time. Yeah. yeah. And what I think is really cool about this is our size charts as knitwear designers assume that large people have big breasts and small people have small breasts or no breasts. Mm -hmm. really. Right. Um, and in comparison to that, the sewers to watch or listen know that a sewing pattern assumes that everybody has a full bust that measures two inches larger than their upper chest, right? Which is a right. sewing V cup. Now they're all different kinds of cup measurements, right? So if you're buying mm -hmm. a bra, that cup is based on the difference between your under bust and your full bust. If mm -hmm. you're sewing, it's based on the difference between your upper bust and your full bust. And, and that's what mine patterns, is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but in any patterns, so it's not a convention, right? It's it's um, not. It's just whatever sizing the designer has come up with. Um, yeah, because there are not. Sorry, no, you're good. We're very excited in this episode, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are not a lot. If you go to the R Word website and look in the uh, <laughs> Ravelry, <laughs> oh, I thought you had read it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm glad I specified. No, if you go to Ravelry, uh, if that is the place you can go to, or any pattern database, and you look at bralette knitting patterns, there are not a lot out there. And I'm sure people have come to different decisions on how they were going to handle this um, because there is not, like, there's no blog, there's no anything um, that exists that kind of tells you as a knitwear designer how to design a bralette the way that there are some resources for designing sweaters. There's a lot of resources for designing sweaters. Um, some are paid, most are paid to some degree, some are free, um, some are just books, but like, you know, there's not that equivalent wealth of information in this kind of design. Yeah. Well, I know when I write a sweater, the cup sizes that I'm writing in are based on a number of rows. Mm -hmm. which is often driven by the stitch repeat. So if my stitch repeat is eight rows, I need to add those bust starts in increments of eight so that the pattern is un uninterrupted. And so adding eight rows would be cup one, adding 16 rows would be cup two. So I think it's important mm -hmm. that knitters who are going to come to a pattern that has any kind of cup or bust start shaping know that those cups are not ever going to correspond with right. their expectations Even, from right. choosing a bra, ever. Absolutely. Especially because... So I think I've said before, I really don't wear regular bras. Um, it's been a long, long time since I've worn a real bra. I mean, I'll wear one like at a wedding. Um, I have that one giant uh, strapless, you know, the wedding yeah. strapless. Yeah. <laughs> and, so uh, like technical materials from NASA holding it in your skin at the band. 
Right. And it's like always the same color um, that isn't like yes. anyone's skin color. And ugly, ugly white person nude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like sallow nude. Yeah. Sallow. Why are they color? <laughs> nobody jealous. They're like, it's nobody like deserves jaundiced to have a nude. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's terrible. So, anyway. Uh, so, I don't know my real bra size, and I usually buy bralettes, which are just size like small, medium, large, and truthfully, they don't fit me because I need to buy a small for it to fit here, but then my breasts are not a small, and then I'm like always whatever, but that's just, yeah. that's how I live my life. So designing a bralette has always been really exciting to me as a way to replace that, um, but I wanted to actually be able to replace even the amount of support I get from a bralette. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, should we talk about that? Should we talk about different levels of support? Sure. Go for it. Okay. Cause I have had tons of questions from y'all and we don't have any like letters from read from niches for this episode. Um, because we didn't get that feedback in time, but I have gotten a lot of questions that we're drawing from. We just don't want to like quote someone that didn't send it in this context. So anyway, uh, so people have asked me a lot about like, can I wear this in this context or can I wear it in that context? And truthfully, I cannot answer for someone like what amount of support they want to have in those situations. But I think Jen and I have sort of established that there are maybe like five different levels of support in bras, right? That there's like the workhorse gigantic bra with a lot of hardware inside of it with like wires and thick straps and thick bands. And yeah. it's like the, the brassiere, Right. They might have a pulley. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. You may need someone's help to get into it. Um, it probably has a zipper because it's too firm. Right. Like yeah. It's like, the, yeah. Yeah. It's like what the corset has become. And yeah. I think you're thinking, and I'm thinking of sports bras that I've owned that are like this. Um, there are sports bras that have like a maximum security level of coverage. Yes. Yeah. Maximum security coverage. I like that. Yeah. And support. Um, and I know from my career in yoga, because I've shopped sports bras and some of the big yoga stores will have all of their bras arranged by like support. Right. So they have like the mechanical pulley system bra that like, if you have big tatas and you like to run, that might be your best bet. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's highest level security, right? And it could be an underwire brassiere like your grandma has worn, or maybe you like to wear no hate. Those are actually pretty comfortable for underwear bras. And, um, then there is that as a sports bra, then there's like some support, which is, I think like what I grew up wearing, like the underwire t-shirt bra or like yeah. the lightly padded underwire bras. And in that would be like a regular level sports bra, probably equivalent support. In fact, those sort of t-shirt underwire bras, like a lot of yoga teachers will just wear those as their bra. Cause if you don't mind sweating in yours, they work pretty similarly to a sports bra, especially in like a low impact sport. Um, do you want to continue? <laughs> ah, fine. You guys see me trying. <laughs> you know, I have never had a good time putting for us. So the idea that you sort them into five categories, frankly, blows my mind. Like there's ones okay. that work and ones that don't. <laughs> right. Well, so this is, I guess, really taken from my background as a yoga teacher and my experience shopping for sports bras that they like high end yoga wear they are actually really great about being transparent about it. Like, this is what you're getting. And I think, well, they would arrange, they would often have like 15 bras, but they would arrange them in the store from low support to high support so that you knew what to buy, which is like, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, 
the when you get to like medium level coverage, medium level support. That is where I would put this bralette. And that is where I would put like a low support sports bra. Yeah. That would be more like a yoga bra, right? Like if you've ever worn something marketed as a yoga bra um, or something that's from like a lot of the athleisure wear companies now will make their uh, high support level bralettes are basically like a sports bra, right? But like a really comfortable sports bra. Um, and then what I honestly wear a lot are lower support bralettes than that, which you can like divide that up into however many you want. I feel like there's a level of bralette where like, yes, it's still a bralette. There's still elastic quality and it's still doing something to like give me some small amount of lift. It feels like I'm wearing a bra. It doesn't feel like I'm not wearing a bra. And then there are bralettes that I have purchased from like high-end lingerie, wherever, um, and bralette knitting patterns that really are basically no support, like tank They're top. Ornamental. Pad. Yeah, decorative. And if you want anybody to see them, you need a bra underneath of them. Unless you're, I mean, I know a lot of ladies who are perfectly comfortable out in the world with no bra. I personally have not ever been that way, even though I'm rather free spirited. I just don't like having my nipples out in the world. And, yeah. um, but Young folks today like it more, I think. If you like having your nipples out, you might wear that kind of bra a lot or wear tank top says bras or not wear a bra at all. And sure. and that's awesome. I'm sure you look great. Yeah. I just feel like some of the knitted bralettes out there would be too sheer. You might get arrested. Well, I mean, not if you wear them as a bralette, but to wear them as a top. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what you mean by anyone seeing them. Yes. I'm, yeah. Okay. You're right. I'm not more like, for, yeah. yeah, they're not outdoor. They're not indoor outdoor. Like I have worn this right. bralette to drop the girls off at school with my pajamas still on, yes. you know? And like, I would totally wear what you're wearing, like with a denim jacket and be like, I am dressed. Yeah. Yeah. This is very sheer, but this is not sheer at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason it's not sheer is because it's knit on fucking zeros. <laughs> yeah. Because I wanted to use fingering weight yarn because I live in Florida. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have never knit fingering on zeros and it's a very dense fabric. And um, it's nice. at first I was taken aback. I was like, this is going to be hard. But when you get out of swatch size and into fabric size, it's actually lovely. And it's mm -hmm. offer so much support because of that fabric density. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've but only still, it's like really thin and wearable and yeah. like breathable. Yeah. Another thing that you're doing in the pattern that you didn't mention is you're recommending different size elastic for different size bodies, which I, as a, like, kind of almost dead in the center of the standard size range, I mean, mm -hmm. standard cross size range, mm -hmm. um, appreciate <laughs> because we need more support in that band. Yeah. And I'm actually, you recommend I'm knitting size four. You recommend a one. I'm going up a size and doing yeah. one and a half inch deep elastic as you recommend in the pattern that you can adjust that. And then I'll just it's it super easy. A larger size. Yeah. Yeah. It's super easy to adjust that. I have a little bubble in there. I've tried to include a lot of modification <clears throat> options for this pattern. Um, and by the end of the test, I'm sure I'm going to have more notes in that section of things that folks have done because like even with 44 sizes there is not going to be one bra that fits everyone there's not going to be one pattern that fits everyone exactly how they want it to fit and you might want to make some changes so changing the thickness of the elastic is super easy but i made sure to include like one one and a half two because those are sort of the standard thickness elastics i see out there and you can very easily just use the rows for the size elastic that you're using. Yeah. 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 Um, you had several dozen people apply to this test. Um, mm -hmm. Were like there 80. any people who would not have been able to easily find a size in this pattern to fit them? No. 
The only reason that they, I don't have 80 testers is because there was too much overlap in some sizes. You know, you can't have like 10 people test the same size. Yeah. Um, but everyone, like, a, I think we, I started talking about this and then rambled away, but folks were often reaching out to me and saying like, I wear this size bra. Am I going to fit? Even someone posted not having looked closely at my size chart and said that they didn't fit in it they posted like a story. They were being supportive. They weren't being mean or anything, but they were not correct because they gave me their measurements and they did fit into the largest cup size. Um, so the reason that everyone fits, I think a lot of people are like four cups. Okay. She's offering A, B, C, D, but that is not it because this is a stretchy bra, like a sports bra, right? A typical sports bra, does not offer cups. There are some out there, I'm sure that do, but most of them are just like a size, unless you're going into more specialty wear, right? Sports bras offer cups. Do they? Oh yeah. Okay, I have literally, well, okay. One, I have never shopped for a high support sports bra. So I always wear the low support ones. They might not in your band size. <laughs> <laughs> but in my band, they, size, they come with cups. Okay. They don't offer them in my band size, which is why I can't get a perfect fit from my own bralette experience. Um, so that's that. But uh, these cups in my pattern are really encompassing several of the like traditional cup sizes in them. And that depends on the upper bust size because the larger the upper bust, the more fabric there is, the more the fabric stretches. So in a larger size, the cup sizes are fitting several inches of full bust range. And in the smaller sizes, they might be fitting like two, three, four inches of bust range. But like I said, I have almost a 10 inch difference between my under bust and my full bust. And I have like a five inch difference between upper bust and full bust. And I am not the largest cup size in my band size, even though my regular bra size is probably something like 32 D or 32 double D maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we can offer this because it's a negative ease garment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, designers and teachers talk vocally about using fixed ease, which is adding the same amount of positive ease, like one inch to every sleeve, regardless of size, or adding right. the same four inches of ease to a garment um, at the bus to get, but we don't want to do fixed ease when we're doing negative ease garments. We want to do what's called proportional ease, which is taking a percentage for just about every measurement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's unintuitive. And I think it trips a lot of designers up, but that negative ease is how you get um, a fit that is based on stretch rather than based on, you know, how much room you have walking down the hallway. <clears throat> right. Because when we're looking at stretch, we're not really talking about inches because it's not like, you know, a hundred stitches might stretch an inch, but then that means that 500 stitches are capable of stretching five inches, right? It becomes proportional not um relative i guess would be the other way of thinking of it with fixed ease. yes yeah. and when something is a positive ease garment and it has that fixed ease then you're assuming that it's bigger than all of the measurements maybe not every single measurement but all of the bust and body measurements you're assuming that the garment is larger than the body that it's going on right and that is the situation we're adding length only to the bust i think for short rows will work really well because there is um, extra fabric to go around already built into that garment. Mm -hmm. You're just making up for the difference in what you might lose in length there. Yeah. And I've done at this point a number of um, negative ease garments, not for myself, but behind the scenes. And, you know, it's really interesting to see how they turn out. It's really a very successful method of fitting a large number of bodies. I will say what it means is that you cannot then take that pattern and then expect to wear it as a positive ease garment. So if somebody were to say, right. oh, I like this, but I just want it to be a t-shirt, like a sleeveless tank. 
um, they would not have a good experience wearing this as a positive ease garment. No, if you sized up, it will not, it will not fit. She the won't shoulders work. will fall off, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, you can just not include the elastic and then it's a negative ease garment still that would be fitted, but it would not be a bralette and you might have an easier time wearing a bra underneath it. Like I wouldn't wear a bra underneath this because one no would be pointless. <laughs> yeah. But there just wouldn't be room for it. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. So, I'm looking forward to mine. I'm going to do mine in green and yellow. I did get the yarn I was waiting for that I originally bought for the sample. Um, mm -hmm. And I could use it because I forgot that it's um, single ply. So it's the same. I'm sure it's the same base I already swatched on. Cause I think know, it probably is. is. Yeah. It feels exact. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> The big yeah. pliers all use the same yarns, and we know that. I mean. Yeah. Jen and I swatched on different single ply yarns, but we're pretty sure they're exactly the same, actually, because they have the exact same put up. If yeah. if two yarns have the same construction, the same spin, and the same, like, yards per gram, then they're probably the same yarn. Yeah. So I haven't done <laughs> the put up, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's only so many. The other thing is, like, we know that these large indie dyers only have so many places where they can buy their stuff. Yeah. Um, and no yeah. shade because what makes them special is the way that they dye it. Well, and it's lovely because that means that once you, that you get versatility as a knitter, I wish that mm -hmm. they would just tell us like, this is such and yeah. such base from such and such so that I know how to use it. I mean, I know. I mean, the thing that's special really is easy. what you've done with it, not where you got it. Right. So exactly. It's well, and that's why a special <laughs> brew. That's why I'm showing my underpants a bit in this design process for this bralette too, because I think this information it helps all of us like to know this is how i designed it so if yeah. you're out there and you're a designer and you're going to design a bralette and you're using this as a resource like that's what it's here for so yeah. i hope it helps yeah and so you've gone with about 90 percent um mm -hmm. of body circumference in the full bust for some sizes and then in other sizes you've taken a percentage of the upper bust yeah Remind me. No. Remind me. Remind me. <laughs> so this is what I did because <laughs> Jen and I talked about, right, our size charts that we use as knitwear designers assume that a bigger body wears a bigger bra size and a smaller body wears a smaller bra size, which means that if I used the full bust measurements from those patterns as indications of what size the full bust should be, right, then I'm... <sighs> I would basically end up with like no A cup in the large sizes and right. like no D cup in the small sizes. And I might not even have ended up with a size that fit me well, right? Um, as a busty person with a small cup because it is assumed that I don't have a big chest, right? Yeah. So... I didn't know how to be like, well, this is an A cup here, so that'll be an A cup there, especially with the fact that it's negative ease and stretchy. So I threw away those full bust measurements. I did not use them for anything. Um, I used the upper bust measurements from our size chart. Well, my size chart, which I say our, because although designers tweak our charts, they um, usually all come from a small the sack same of resources. Population, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're starting from the same place. And so I use the upper bust measurement to predict full bust for everyone because that is what I'm bringing it back to. It made sense to me. Um, you know, I have the predicted upper bust and a predicted under bust measurement. So it made sense to me that I was basically just looking for four different sizes between those. And in order to get sizes that made sense, I used a percentage of the upper bust for each size. Right. So the smallest the size experience is going to be choose a band size based mm -hmm. on the size of your torso and then measure your full bust and aim for something that's around 90% of that. Yes, that right. is the size guide instruction. Right. But right. that right. was right. not the how I graded it. Yeah, you didn't back into that that's, that's not the grading methodology, but that is the exactly. same experience that a knitter will have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're yeah. knitting, sorry, I was still talking to designers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so 
if you're a knitter and you're knitting this pattern, you're going to measure your upper bust and your under bust first. And that determines your band size. And I do recommend that you choose your band size ultimately based on your upper bust because it's more important for the shoulders to fit. Yeah. And if you want to change your band size, because that is just straight knitting, it's very easy. You can, if you need to, you can change the elastic length to adjust your size without changing the number of stitches, or you can change the number of stitches. You can knit a different size band, and then you will just have to do a little bit of math and either add some increases before you start doing your shaping for your full bust or uh, omit some of the increases in the pattern in order to end up at the full bust that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, and that happens pretty quickly. You go from the band to the full bust in just a couple inches because it is a bra. <laughs> yeah, I think that where I wanted to go with that is, you know, 90% doesn't feel like a whole lot of negative ease, but right. because it is that really dense fabric, you're really counting on the structure of the fabric to do some of that work. So instead mm -hmm. of coming up with a garment that is um, going to lose its shape throughout the day and counts on a lot of negative ease to hold you up, I feel like when you count on a lot of negative ease, then as your garment relaxes, you're not you lose going to have yeah. the same experience throughout the day. Have you? Okay, so I know you finished yours a couple weeks ago and you've been wearing it. Mm -hmm. Have you washed it? I mean, I I block like I soaked it after I installed the final elastics, which I had already I mean, since you've been it. wearing it, have you, has it been? I don't think I have washed it since I've worn it because I haven't sweat into it really good. Yeah. And so I usually will just air out my knits. Yeah. But I will say I have not lost any shape. It's yeah, still that's what I was wondering me. because I look at yeah. it and it looks like you just finished it. And you are yes. a fussy person. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I have worn it for like full days. Like I said, I've put it on you know, if you must know, I usually sleep naked. And so in the morning I have to put something on <laughs> to like go see my children and bring them to school. So I just like grab this and put it on and then I'll end up working from home the whole entire day. And when they come home from school, I'm like still wearing this. Um, and I have not had any issue with that because like you said, I didn't want to rely on a lot of negative ease and you can like if you wanted it to do more negative ease in your full bust you certainly can choose a smaller cup size than what i recommend but one of the reasons that it also isn't going to lose its shape is because i'm relying on the elastic for the support not the ease you know um, yeah. and you need the elastic in the neck and armhole to hold up that fabric in the same place all day and that's why yeah, because we want some uplift. We don't want it all supported right. on a shelf, right? Like, I mean, you get something from that, but it's not as much support as you get from adding the elastic in the top. And so yeah. that's I want that tension years. evenly distributed. Yes. Right. That's why I am like, tip something on more. <laughs> <laughs> please do. <laughs> but yeah, that's what took me so long to figure out how to do that. Because installing the, the band elastic is pretty simple with the provisional cast on and you just close it up in there and that people have done that. But the encasing the elastic in the welts was a technique that I had to like learn and then um, think of how I would then create the open channel to get the elastic in. Because if you just do a sewn tubular bind off, you've closed up the channel, even if you don't do it in the round. So, um, yeah, I had to develop some skill to like figure out how to actually design something that would have that upper elastic, but I knew that's what I was looking for yeah. as a busty person in order to make a knit that would actually feel like a bralette for me. Well, one of your original iterations, you talked about just sewing on lingerie elastic, which would also be a really pretty detail. If somebody didn't mm -hmm. feel like doing this, they could. You could, but we just, so obviously Jen has consulted on this pattern. If that's not obvious, um, had my I, fingers in the pie y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I often bring Jen in as a grading consultant. And when she says that she's designed, um, negative ease garments before that's what she's talking about. She consults for other designers and she helps 
um, in different capacities. So the way she helps me is that I bring her my work. And with this bra, I did all of the work really and like knit this sample. I don't know if I finished this sample or not, but I knit a sample uh, halfway at least and did all of my math and thought about what I thought it was going to be because I really needed to like wrap my head around it first. Then I brought it to Jen and like walked through it with her and she gave me her feedback because Jen has a lot more experience than me with constructing garments. Um, like I have knit a ton of sweaters before I became a designer, but I have not, I'm not a sewist. And there's a different level of technical information that like Jen has always possessed that um, really helps me to make sure that I end up with the fit I want. And uh, we've done that together now on many of my designs. Uh, but if you're listening, there are also designers that if you want to come to Jen and say, here's my sketch, here's my gauge, please design this sweater. She also does that for folks. So she has like, from scratch created negative ease garments before. And um, so that's why I came to her to like, I didn't, I have not created a negative ease garment before this. And I knew I needed someone to help me in addition to Heather, shout out to my tech editor who did put in a lot more hours on this design than um, any other. <laughs> Look how freaking sizes. Yeah, and it's 27 pages and it's packed full of information. And I have not even added photos to it yet. So it's probably going to end up being like 33 pages or something, you know. Well, you know, you and I have known each other for coming up on three years now, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And, you know, we have learned so much from each other's skill set. But um, I feel like this project, this bralette for me, is kind of like my capstone project in what I'm learning from you, which is different ways to show up in my own skin and be excited about it, right? So um, I tend to be a really practical knitter. Um, I also tend to be somebody who doesn't like body conscious things. And mm -hmm. um, I do like a lot of props, but I like them with a really high waist, right? Um, and as my body has changed, it's gotten bigger over the last few years. Um, just kind of trying to figure out what is that style. And there has just been something about this spring with this bralette that has just really unlocked for me a level of, I want that too for me, right? Like there are all these things that we think are cute, but then we don't do them. Um, and I may never wear it out of the house, um, but I don't think that that will be the case. Uh, I also, I find myself like now that I'm in Pittsburgh, I definitely, or like I went to see my mom in Virginia and I had to go through West Virginia and like, I was wearing like, okay, so what I've done is I've gotten ready for this bra. I've gotten so excited. I've been like waiting for yarn, waiting for the pattern. Like I've been like, well, what am I going to wear it with? Right. And so like, you know, I've been like buying like these like cute, like joggers. Right. And then I was like, well, I'll just get a couple of these like little tank tops so that I have multiple outfits that go together. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it's like not a silhouette I would have been excited about a few years ago, but also like. Really you look great. Whatever. Um, yeah. But like. I was like wearing like the, like some iteration of like you know olive green joggers and like neon pink tank top. With yes, <laughs> since I got gas in West Virginia, and I was like, Ugh. I've been getting stared at in West Virginia since I was eighteen <laughs> years old. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is my first cross country road trip. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, mm, this is this is. This is a little yeah. more vulnerable than it would have been in Oregon. <laughs> if you're listening in West Virginia, tell us what it's like there for you. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Because if you're yeah. listening to us, you're probably also a little bit of a weirdo. Yeah. It's just real, like, you know, to get rough, I drive through some real rural, like. Yeah. I mean, that's rural. how I feel about living in the Tampa Bay area because yeah. it's there's only like 65,000 people in this city and not um, 10 million or whatever I used to live in. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how I'm going to feel about having a wool bra. Uh, my intuition is that because I am somebody who gets hot, I've got to wear it as a top at home a lot. Mm -hmm. um, with this new puppy, especially we go in and out, out back a lot. And I don't want to do that in my pajamas. I'm looking for a step up from pajamas. But exactly. I do think that I would wear it with pants like this, like the ones I'm wearing, which are high-waisted joggers. 
um, mm -hmm. in a, like a cottony blend, um, which I'm going to buy more of because they're very comfortable. Um, yeah. Welcome to my life. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to wear it with a jean jacket and I'm just really like this season, I'm just really leaning into like a, like a nineties. Yeah. Well, bras and tops have been in for a little while now. And I think like, you know, Jen and I are not in our twenties. We're not even in our early thirties. And so there's like a certain level in the past even when I was like 28 and I wanted to dye my hair pink, I had like a horrible boyfriend who was like a total chauvinist. And I didn't realize that until I left him, but he was like, you're too old for that at 28. And so, you know, that's why I was 30 when I finally did, um, like have, had left him and moved forward. Oops, sorry. I smacked my microphone and yeah. So there is like a certain level in the past, especially that people used to say like different clothes are age appropriate and like, this is okay versus that's not okay. And even like people who compliment me always say like, oh, you don't look your age at all. And it's like, well, okay, but. But that's I'm kind not, of ages. <laughs> right, I'm not trying to look young. This is just how I look. And I'm not trying to dress or portray myself any certain way either. I just want to dress how I like to dress and what feels pretty. And like, I did make this bralette design more full coverage so that I can wear it underneath like sheer tops, loose fitting t-shirts, things yeah. like this dress that tend to fall off and I won't feel exposed the way that I would in like, low coverage, low support for all that that I wear sometimes yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm like comfortable wearing this in front of my stepdaughters that I don't wear my underwear in front of, uh, because they are my stepdaughters. Yeah. <laughs> we are not there. <laughs> well, I, I feel like a bralette is a really, um, fun way to experiment. And we'll talk about this more episode, next episode, but with something that doesn't necessarily have to be an heirloom contribution into your generational mm -hmm. legacy of hand knits. It can just be playful. Right. You might you. make it and not wear it. And that could also be okay. Um, you might make it in a hundred different flavors and never show them to anybody. Um, but I'm finding that in this current iteration of this body and this stage of my life that I'm leaning a little bit and this season spring, Right. I'll mm -hmm. move away from like my traditional like cottage core aesthetic and into like a more neon, playful, funky, say yeah. something about it kind of yeah. vibe. Yeah. Well, and it's like I wanted something to do with like a beautiful skein of fingering weight yarn that we see like gorgeous colors that dyers dye. And I don't want to use all of them as a sweater because in my opinion, they're not always appropriate for the garments that I make for my wardrobe. And um, so it's like, well, what do you do with those? And I'm a garment maker, so I don't knit socks very often anymore. And I didn't want to just knit socks because they have sock yarn, you know? So in many sizes, you would only need one skein of fingering weight yarn in probably about half the sizes, I think. Um, and in many more sizes, like one skein of fingering weight yarn and one or two minis for the contrast trim will also work great. I think yeah. we're getting that contrast yardage. I think one mini probably will cover every size in the trim. Probably depends on the band depth. Probably, but I still think it might be. Well, I have to do the math, y'all. Yeah, four, four inches deep or whatever in 54 inches is a lot of yardage. It is. That's true. Um, so either way, we'll see, we'll see. Right. Either way, I think most of us have stashed yarn that you can make this bralette with. Yeah. And so that means to me that it is a sustainable knit because it's like, I have so many skeins in my stash that I can knit these bralettes with. And I do plan to make a cotton one to see what happens and a silk one. Right. Um, and so there is, that, even just that, that stash busting and using what you have is sustainable. But I think a lot of people will find they actually like to wear it. I didn't think I'd be able to design a bralette that I actually wanted to wear. And that's, you know, why I didn't for a long time. And this is 
what I was looking for. So it's not what everyone wants, but it is what I wanted and what I think a lot of people are wanting. And um, yeah. Also, I get so many advertisements from like athletic wear companies now that are selling merino wool bralettes and sports bras because they're talking about how it's like a better fiber for moisture wicking, I guess. I'm like keeping sweat off of you and breathable and it's antimicrobial. So when you wear, people may or may not know this, but a lot of like athletic wear fabrics, if you wear them very sweaty, you're much more likely to get things like athlete's foot, ringworm, yoga rashes, feet rashes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So as a yoga teacher, I was always having to like carry extra clothes and change because if my clothes were not breathable, yes, they're good for sweating in, but they, you can't just wear those sweaty, but non-breathable even those, clothes. Like, those high performance athletic fibers, you're also supposed to hand wash and dry. Mm-hmm. Like it's not yeah. like wool is any more high maintenance than it's not. what you it's... buy in these performance fibers. Yeah. So even pay. though I'm in Florida and it's 85, like I can wear this as a bra, especially under a really lightweight top. Um, but like, would I wear it as a bra in 85 or 90 degree weather when we go to the park? I'll probably not do that. Cause that I might be. Say, I know that you're also, your sense of what's hot has changed because you definitely posted a picture of you wearing a long sleeve sweater in 78 degree weather. And I was cold. Yeah, it was your shady. sense of what is hot has changed. <laughs> when because you I was in like your blood degree things. weather and I almost melted yesterday. So I know. And that was me just one year ago, but now, yeah. um, now I'm here. Today's my one year anniversary actually of living here. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and when I went home for Christmas, I was freezing in Connecticut. It was like 12 degrees and I couldn't believe I've never felt that cold before. Yeah. And I lived in that climate for my entire life until now. <laughs> so All yeah, right. it's true. Well, let's see what we've got going on now. Um, mm-hmm. When's this going to air? Two, 10 days from now? 10 days? Yeah. Eight days. It's going to air days. a week from tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So early April. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, when's Therese? When's Therese? April 10th. So like now, almost now. Yeah. almost now. Okay. So <laughs> uh, she's she coming. She coming. She is coming. And if you're looking for your next favorite warm weather dress, you know, you guys knit yourself a beautiful dress, even if it's not one of my patterns, knit yourself a silk dress or a tensile dress one day, save up all your birthday money or whatever you need to do to get, um, get some secondhand silk, whatever it is, right? Find yourself a luxury fiber at least once in your life, invest in yourself like that because it feels so good to have something special that you make for yourself. And um, I do wear this dress whenever I have like a special occasion now and I feel, I feel special. It feels really nice to have something like luxurious and intentionally luxurious that you make. So yeah. that's what Therese is all about. And I hope, um, I hope everyone feels at least inspired to go out and find their luxury knit, uh, and start planning it, save your pennies. We all typically, if you are a knitter, you are likely to be able to find at least once the money to buy some luxury yarn for yourself. Yeah, seriously. Mm-hmm. What do you have going on, Jen? I'm getting ready to launch Classic LBD, but I'm not yes. going to be mid-April. I don't have a final date yet. I know. I'm really excited. Um, but I'm planning. So, okay. The 8th, actually. I will be. You said it's just going to air on the 8th. The 8th is like a Monday, I think. No, or Saturday. No, no, it's no, a no. Saturday. This is going to air on April Eight days. 5th. You said eight days. Eight days. Okay. April 5th. So the 8th is in a few days. Everyone. Yes. So I, <laughs> on the 8th, think of me, I think I will be doing <laughs> photography for LBD and hopefully my bralette. I hope it's not. I want to photograph them together with mm. a secret shawl that I have been working on this winter. No, it's not super secret, but it's pretty, it's pretty hush. Um, okay. will debut around Maryland Sheep and Wool in May. Um, awesome. Yeah. Which is partly like, I've been like, what am I going to post about? I'm working on something quietly. Um, yeah. 
But then luckily I've had to rip out this other sweater two times. I've had plenty to post about in terms of works in progress. Um, So yeah, I think I'm trying to build something that feels really cohesive for that photo shoot. Um, You are. Yeah, your color palette is really working. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm just going to include your palette in my spring collection. Please do. that in time. Yeah. It's fine. I think you're going to have a different, you're going with a very soft, pretty feel. And I think mine mm-hmm. is going to be like a little more. A little adapt. funkier. I mean, I am planning about a hundred of these already, so I'm sure I'll have some funky versions to post, but my aesthetic aesthetic is pretty soft and, uh, and so that is more the way I lean. Yeah. Uh, Candace's will be a little funky. Y'all will see it. And this bralette will be out. If this episode is airing on April 5th, then you've got about a month to wait for the bralette design. So I think it's May 8th or something. So get those skeins. Mm-hmm. Start your own spring your collection. And what you want to wear it with. And get your high-waisted joggers and your denim jackets. Mm-hmm. And your neon sunnies. And let's rock. <laughs> yes. So we've got the trend episode is going to be our next episode. Which that Topical. will be on April 19th. <laughs> and uh, what do we have after that? Do we know? We don't know. Let us know. We might do, uh, you know, what we really want is we want somebody to come on and we want to talk about your body and your fit. Mm -hmm. Um, We have, if you are interested in doing this and you would like to have a conversation with us about whether or not this might be right for you. um, And you go to our website and I'll put this in the show notes. um, You can find a little form to fill in and let us know you're interested in doing this. And then we will talk to you. It is not like you will automatically be like, Shoop yeah. in. It's no, not we're not just going to gonna send you a link and make you come here. <laughs> we're collecting information. We've, we've heard from a few people, but we want to make sure it's right for everybody and you know what it's going to be like. Um, but we'd love to have a third person up here and be able to say, hey, show us your sweaters. Let's talk about how to get you the exact fit you want in your next garment um, mm-hmm. based on the fit that you have and the clothes that you already have and your measurements. And so, um, yeah. yeah, if you're somebody who's like, I feel like, I want my garments to fit better, but I don't even really know where to start or what's possible. Um, you're a great candidate for this, and we'd love to we'd love to bring you along. Yeah, we would love to have you. Now our tech supports you being here with us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I mean, I can't believe we're already. This is episode eight, so we're going to be looking at ten episodes soon. And we've had so much fun. And we did our first live recently when we did the bralette giveaway. So we had a lot of fun and we would love to hear from you if you enjoyed that and if you want more lives because we're uh, planning to perhaps do them more regularly as a way to hang out a little more casually than these episodes where we have like topics to cover. Um, so yeah, we're really interested in in your thoughts about like what you, your ideal episode would look like. And you guys have been giving us those. So please keep them coming. And uh, I think that's it, right? That's it. Let us know in the comments. We always want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Um, We didn't do a lot of comment reading today, but we have been taking a lot of notes because y'all gave us a lot of goodies in the last episode. So more goodies, please keep it coming. Mm -hmm. And we do have some stuff stuff for the trend episode, but if you have more for that, send it in. I got yeah. a lot of good trend stuff on my Instagram grid. I don't know if you saw that, but there's some good spicy, you know what nice. we're talking about. Great. What Not are we hair. talking about? Oh, right. I do know Not that. Hair. You know, I have feelings. There are lots of strong opinions about mohair, y'all. You eat a lot. Yeah. It. My main feeling is that I'm allergic to alpaca. So... I don't love it. It Mo doesn't hair. love me. And Mo hair is goat, right? Mo hair's goat. Yeah. So maybe I'm allergic to goats because Mo hair is one of the biggest offenders for making me break out in a rash. But you but can wear cashmere, and cashmere is goats. I don't wear cashmere. Oh, you don't? But is it I you're mean, to it? I'm having trouble figuring out exactly which fibers I am allergic to because. I thought that a project that was making me very allergic was alpaca. But then when I actually looked at the ball band, it was supposedly merino and like linen and cotton. 
And so it, it's not, and I mean, it's a reputable brand. I don't think they're wrong, but that combination was not good for me at all, but it was just fuzzier. So maybe it's time for know. scratch test. Yeah. Maybe your allergies probably can, could do the fiber artist special for you. <laughs> right. Do you, can you please scratch test alpaca, yeah. cashmere, mohair, <laughs> Maria, Targi, Rebelay. <laughs> You know, every time I go to my allergies, they're like, do you have any cats or dogs? I'm like, no, but I have a lot of yarn in the house from sheep. And they're like, they ignore me. I'm like, I don't think you understand how much wool is in my house. Like, you're not, like, you're not screening for this. But let me tell you, there's a lot of animal in my life. Um, That's like the number one comment when people come into my home because my yarn area is like right up front that they're like, wow, this is a lot of yarn. And I'm like, this is my show yarn. Yeah, <laughs> the, all the ugly yarn is upstairs. The ugly yarn is somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> all the ugly yarn is upstairs, and all my size six needles are in projects I got sick of working on because they're not huge needles. So <laughs> that's the stuff you don't correct see in my correct. craft room. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's in the hidden bins. All right, yeah. Well, it's great take as well. Yeah, let's take talk it out. in the comments. We want to talk to you. Yeah, we thank you. I hope you have a happy day. Happy knitting. <laughs>